get started with today's episode, I would like to quickly read you our podcast disclaimer. This podcast is for educational purposes only, and it is not to substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professional. You should always speak with your physician or other healthcare professionals before doing any fasting, changing your diet in any way, taking or adjusting any medications or supplements, or adopting any treatment plan for a health problem. The use of any other products or services purchased by you as a result of this podcast does not create a healthcare provider-patient relationship between you and any of the experts affiliated with this podcast. Any information and statements regarding dietary supplements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All right, and now we'll get started with today's episode. Hi everyone, it's Megan Ramos here and welcome to another episode of the Fasting Method Podcast. Today, I'm very fortunate to be joined by both of my lovely co-hosts, Dr. Terry Lance and Dr. Nadia Padaguana. And in today's episode, we have some exciting news. I have a new book coming out. It's going to be released in North America on June 6th of this year, so about a month away from now, and it's called The Essential Guide to Woman and Fasting, and we thought we would take some time today to talk about this book, explore it, how it might differ from other books that we've created and other books on women and fasting. Can't wait, Megan. This is very exciting for me. And I think um, having the three of us here is great because we can also talk about one of our books that Nadia has written and talk about these two. You ready, Nadia? I am ready. I'm actually excited, Megan. I, I haven't gotten, sometimes we get, has everyone else gotten a book ahead of time and gotten to read it? It's always exciting and we always post it, but I actually haven't gotten So this is going to be just as exciting for me to read it uh, along with everyone else. And I'm sure we will eventually have Coach Lisa in our book club go over your book, which is always really, really exciting. Members get really, really into it. So I'm excited to hear more about it. So Megan, my first question about this is, what made you decide to write this book? Why did you decide to go down this path? Well, it's a bit of a a funny story. I joined Jason Fung, our colleague, in one of his publisher meetings to talk about some of the science behind fasting when it came to an upcoming book that he was working on. And I obviously have a lot to say on the subject, as everyone listening knows. In the publishing house, I, I was just really interesting. You know, they heard me explaining things Same topics as Jason, but in different perspectives. And a lot of it specifically geared towards women because that is a large percentage of the community that we serve. It's about 70% female. So they reached out to me and they said, listen, you've got all of this knowledge about fasting and we need to get it into a book somehow. So we did this discovery session about sort of my background, my experience, and just sort of my thoughts on misinformation out there. And they came back to me saying, we would love you to write a book on women and fasting, especially geared towards metabolic patients, because we truly think that your approach, what you and Jason and your whole team are doing is very different than what others are doing out there when it comes to fasting. So this was many years ago now. The COVID pandemic kind of set the timeline for this back a bit, but I think that kind of works in everybody's favor because I had this time for the first time in a long time where I was grounded and wasn't traveling all over, educating other physicians and healthcare practitioners on how to fast. I really was able to immerse myself with our coaching clients and our community over at the fasting method and just learn so much more. And we were able to capture all of that. So that entire year I spent locked down in Toronto, we were able to really capture everything in this book. And it really dramatically changed between where we started versus where we've ended up. And I'm really proud of it. And also, since, I mean, it's, this is a big one, I think, is that the three of us have had a chance to do some really cool masterclasses in our program 
during the pandemic and post pandemic, you know, Terry has done a few on the behavioral component of eating and fasting. And Megan, you and I have done a few on weight loss and women's health, particularly. So it's it's really just interesting. I was saying today that we're eternal students, right? We're always learning new things. And we have such a large pool of, if I can call them that, of people, particularly women in our program. So we learn so much from them every single day. And it's such a great opportunity based on your experience and also just the way you write. I remember when I first used to, to read the blogs I started to to really recognize when when the blogs are written by you or they were written by by Jason. Although I do think you guys write very similarly, but you know you you do have your own particular way of putting things and to talking to people. People love coming to your meetings because of that. And so I'm very excited. But I think that there is probably a lot. I know even this new masterclass that you have right now has. I think I heard somewhere 30% new info. So it's always exciting to get new info because we are learning every single day and have more and more info to share every single day. You have to evolve as a practitioner. And that's one thing that I find really separates our group from a lot of others out there. Our group of coaches, myself, Jason, the whole team, you know, we are really students for life, like you said, Nadia. And we've evolved our positions on everything over time. You know, from I remember day one in the clinic talking about where we stood with stevia. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> have stevia, enjoy stevia. It probably doesn't matter to where we are now with the subject and we're saying, okay, park the stevia, maybe use some glycine if you need some sweetener in your tea or coffee. I mean, that's a very minor thing, but we've not been afraid to evolve. We've been not afraid to change things up. We've been willing to put in the work to reinvent things like masterclasses that take a tremendous amount of time and energy as I've learned trying to redevelop one in my first trimester pregnancy has been, <laughs> been a bit of a struggle. I'll say that, but we want to make sure that we are evolving and everything that we're learning, you know, goes to help people improve their progress and optimize their health even better. That is so absolutely it right there. And uh, I'm wondering, I mean, I can see Terry has some questions, but I have some of my own. I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe you can give us a bit of a preview because I know that within our program, because working so much with women about fasting, I mean, I, I say this very proudly. I think we are definitely the, the group in the program, you in particular, that have worked with the highest number of people in general uh, with therapeutic fasting. So it's it's just an overwhelming uh, amount of, of experience and, and information and knowledge to share. But I'm wondering specifically, I know that over time, because we've worked in this realm so deeply, of course, so intensely in clinic, that we've come up with quote unquote protocols, right? So we've come up with protocols for fasting for your menstrual cycles, fasting during your reproductive years, fasting post menopause, fasting for fertility. I'm wondering if, you know, if these are things that you talk about in your book and what else you could tell us about your book. Yeah. So one of the questions that I've discovered and being asked the most on social media is how does this differ from all of the other books that have come from people in the fasting method organization? So Jason Fong or our combined book, Life in the Fasting Lane, or your book, Nadia, The PCOS Plan. And this book focuses on a lot of women and metabolic and autoimmune conditions. And we really look at women throughout the span of their adult lives, you know, from those reproductive years, the transition into perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, and how women can fast successfully at each one of these stages to really tackle their metabolic health concerns. And some tips for women who are just looking to optimize their health as well. My area of expertise on our team is definitely type 2 diabetes reversal. That's where I wear our hat. Nowadays, there's so many women developing type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, even in their 20s, just like I did in my 20s. And what can they do and how can they do it safely? And I see so much misinformation out there about women in fasting, especially women in reproductive years. Even this past weekend, I was just scrolling through Instagram and this company, this person that I really admire was saying, okay, some fasting can help in reproductive years, but a lot of it, you know, is 
a big hindrance. And where are they getting that from? Like, I, I don't know. Like, all I know is that Nadia makes babies all of the time. Like, every day there's a new baby dedicated to Nadia <laughs> because she's, it's been her approach to therapeutic fasting and nutritional strategies that's led to the, you know, development of all of our TFM babies. There's just so much bogus information out there. So I also try to debunk that, you know, why it's safe through women throughout their entire lifespan. Or we just recently, you know, we're going through a new masterclass and someone emailed in saying they signed up at 82 to reverse their type 2 diabetes, this lovely lady. And, you know, is is this just, a you know, a dream? Is her head in the clouds for thinking that this is possible? So we really tackle, you know, how to implement fasting safely for these metabolic health conditions across the whole adult lifespan of a female. That's great to hear, Megan. And I'm really curious then, based on what you and Nadia just said, so having read the PCOS plan, what would make me decide to get your book? How does this add to what I know so far about women's health and and fasting? What else am I going to learn here? Well, I think in my book, I do touch base on PCOS Obviously, it's, a, you know, nowadays, I always say you, you have PCOS, so let's prove it otherwise. You know, if you're a younger female who's grown up on sort of the standard North American diet, it's really unfortunate. So I do touch base on it and a bit of our sex hormones, but I really look at it through a metabolic and inflammatory lens, which I think is very different than what Nadia did in the PCOS plan. Fantastic. I actually was going to say, you know, when writing the PCOS plan book, It was hard and easy all at once because all we had to do was very specifically focus on PCOS and only write. But that was at the same time very hard because we were leaving out a whole lot of women that we want to help, right? So we had to really only talk about PCOS. So I'm so glad that somebody in our team has the opportunity to do that because even though, like Megan said, at this point, the estimation is that between 10 to 30% of women in their reproductive years have PCOS. We know it's a lot more than that. But still, you know, we are leaving out a whole lot of women who either haven't been diagnosed with PCOS and they need that diagnosis in order to be able to read the PCOS plan. Sometimes they feel like, oh, you know, my doctor says I don't have PCOS. So then, you know, why would I read the PCOS plan? I really do think that the PCOS plan is a great, I think, starter book for all women. I think I, I know a lot of men who've read it. Because it has a great little practical guide on, you know, sort of how to fast, how to start fasting. But I do think that we had to leave out a lot of stuff, you know, in order to make it more concise and to be very specific. So I'm glad that there's an opportunity. I often get this question, Megan, so I don't know if you address it. I'm, I already know that you do because you talked about inflammatory conditions. But I very often, probably daily, get the question, what if I don't have PCOS but have endometriosis? Is that the same? And how do I fast? And is fasting going to be beneficial? And so, you know, endometriosis is this estrogen-dominant inflammatory concern that many women have. It's very debilitating, painful, but it's not PCOS. And so we, we couldn't address it. We talk a bit about it. We really kind of laid into the autoimmune side of things because I'm really aggravated by the misinformation when it comes to that, especially when it comes to conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, for example. And I'm really fortunate that I have a publisher who didn't try to censor me at all. Sometimes we have lots of peers in this space and so many peers have written books and I know that they're playing it safe in their books in some instances. And I also do know from my collaboration with Jason over the years, working with some larger publishers, just sort of the fears. But like you, Nadia, I'm working with Greystone for this particular book and they let me be me. They let me be the expert and drive the content of the book, which I think is one of the things that I'm most grateful for about our collaboration. You know, I didn't have to say that type 2 diabetics could only fast for 14 hours. We know that that doesn't work. We know that's not going to get anybody off insulin, right? Um, 
And so I was able to push the dial and push the handle. So since I did have the liberties that I did to be honest and just, you know, really follow our guidelines, you know, what Jason and I started and what the rest of us as a team has continued to evolve over this last decade, I really wanted to talk about things like autoimmune conditions, especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Like if I see one more post or hear one more person say, you know, it's not safe to fast fast when you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, as we recently talked about in an episode, there's so many nuances to it, right? And if someone is in a stable thyroid state, we can absolutely fast. And we often see them reduce medication dependency or come off of medications altogether because we're really tackling the inflammation that's driving the autoimmunity in the first place. So those things were something that I really wanted to touch base on in this particular book. I love hearing that, Megan, because so many times in the past few years, I've been working with a client who, despite what knowledge I'm sharing, their internalized belief system is that I'm kind of held back from progress because I have thyroid issues and because I'm perimenopausal. They are automatically feeling kind of doomed that this may not work for them. And I I can't wait until all of them have this book and read it to understand they're not doomed. There are things they can understand better to really maximize their use of fasting and improving their overall health. So I wish I could hand each one of them a copy of this book as soon as it comes out because I, I... I get really concerned that they've already accepted the limiting information that they've been kind of told through social media or whatnot. So that's very exciting to me. I start off in the book sharing a bit of my story and my journey. And because it's a book, I was able to be a little bit more personal in what it was that I shared. You know, it's not that I'm limited to 40 minutes on stage or 40 minutes in a podcast. So, you know, I talked about growing up and all of my grandmothers and aunts and mom even saying, oh, enjoy it now, honey. Enjoy being skinny and healthy now because as soon as you turn 30, it's downhill. And as soon as you turn 40, you just start gaining five pounds a year for the rest of your life. And then at 45, you become diabetic, like just total doomsday stuff. And for a long time, I just kind of accepted that's how it was going to be. You know, everyone in my family started gaining a lot of weight after the age of 40. I was going to gain a lot of weight at the age of 40. Oh, but wait, I started to in my late 20s. Um, it was, <laughs> I, was I was just about to say, you were always an overachiever, Megan. Oh, you just <laughs> had to beat everyone. You had to yeah. gain the weight earlier. You had to get the diabetes earlier. <laughs> you just had to overachieve as usual. It was just, you know, it's just sort of wild. You just like, expect this. So in my personal life, you know, I work with a personal trainer and I'm a Pilates instructor and, and you know, I have all these things that I do for my own self-care. And one of my instructors in these various things, um, she has a daughter-in-law my age. And her daughter-in-law is just diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And this particular instructor of mine, she's exceptionally healthy. She's been conscious of what she eats. She's born and raised Californian in the Bay Area, um, always has shopped at farmer's markets since she was a little kid, exceptionally active. I always think when I see a a pack of bicyclists, she's got to be in there because she's always on the road. So she's very healthy and, you know, she's in her 60s and she's exceptionally healthy. So she's got this, you know, 38-year-old daughter-in-law going on 39 who's just diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And the doctor told her that this is just the norm nowadays and just to accept it. And so, you know, this instructor knowing my career profession wanted to have this conversation with me. You know, why are people just accepting this? And, you know... (laughs) I guess it's for everybody, but I find this is so true for women. Like we are just told doom, doom, doom. It's happening earlier. We're told that that's normal. We're told it's normal for our kids. None of this is normal. Like there was some crazy statistic recently that showed like the rate or the number of strokes in 11 to 18 year olds has gone up over 30% in the last five years, right? Like we're just told this is normal. This is the new normal. Like you now need to stick yourself with a needle 
needle every week to maintain your weight if you want a chance and you need to start doing it when you're in your 20s. Like all of this stuff is becoming normal. It has never been normal throughout human history. Why are we accepting of that? I know, and this sort of comes to another discussion that I was having with some friends, colleagues over the weekend about these weight loss injection medications. And, you know, there's nothing, any short corner is not a successful one. And we've all worked with so many people that have taken these medications. And how many of them have really reported dramatic weight loss? right? They barely any of them have reported dramatic weight loss like, at all. So it's just kind of, you know, mind blowing. And then there's some people who do experience some weight loss from it, but then they have some other diabetic related issues that can come down the road if they continue to eat the standard North American diet and really lean into sugars and sodas and alcohol and all that kind of stuff causing their pancreas to sort of overwork and eventually burn out, then they can't gain weight eventually, but then they become insulin dependent down the road. So, you know, cutting corners always results in, in just that. You know, people who are using these injections for blood glucose control and are doing things like fasting and lower carb diets and they're taking really good care of their pancreas, sure, it's great. But even in these patient populations, we're not seeing dramatic weight loss from these injections. We're seeing the same rate of weight loss from people who do fasting and low carb interventions. So, you know, there's, I just wanted to be real and honest with women in this book. Like there's no cutting corners for this. Like these are the strategies that if you implement, whether you're going through menopause or postmenopausal or, you know, you're 27 and with diagnosed with type 2 diabetes like I was, action plans are actually going to help you know, at 27, I reversed type 2 diabetes in six months, meaning I had a normal glucose response. So I could go and eat something like a piece of cake and have a normal glucose response. I would have passed an oral glucose tolerance test. This is diabetes reversal. This is not remission. I was not putting it in remission by changing my diet. So, you know, at 27, it wasn't a monumental amount of work. So I want women to know, you know, if you're young, you can do something about this. You're not doomed for life. It's not going to get worse. It's not normal to get rheumatoid arthritis at 38 years old. Something's wrong. Um, it's not normal to get type 2 diabetes at 27 years old. And you can fix it relatively quickly with the right interventions. And the same thing for women who are postmenopausal. You're not doomed to be depressed and overweight and diabetic for the rest of your life. That's not it. You can enjoy your life. And I had a client the other week and she had just turned 75. And she said to me, honestly, I feel better than I did when I was 25. I actually feel like I'm getting younger as I'm getting older. And she said, 75 might be my best year yet. Isn't that so cool? Like, that's what I want as I get older. Thinking about some of these things you've said about some client conversations and um, the things that really kind of seem to excite you as you talk about this, I want you just to think a little bit into the future. The book is out. People are reading it and you're getting feedback. What do you think you're going to be most proud of about this book? Well, right now, I think with so much censorship being out there, I'm just really proud of my publisher for letting me be me and getting the information out there that I know is going to help people. People try to censor Jason and I all the time. That's just kind of the reality nowadays. We can't even on, on social media platforms publish ads promoting our fasting program because fasting is in the name. We are censored. You know, so we either have to change our business name or rebrand if we want to be able to advertise. So we really have to rely on kind of a word of mouth of individuals and in their program, people coming to our podcast and that, you know, to help get the message out there about fasting and what it is that we're doing. So I'm just really fortunate that I don't have this censorship because I think the information I put out there is the best to my present knowledge about strategies at this particular time. And, you know, we get to wake up every day and go to work. And I know as a business owner, there's so much business stuff that I don't necessarily enjoy every day at work. But what I love is that all of it pays off because we get to help people truly get better. Every day, it's a new story. 
every day Nadia's got a new baby being born. Every day I've got somebody who's come off of insulin. Every day Terry has someone, you know, who makes this absolute breakthrough and changes their relationship with food and eating. And we get to see these nonstop transformations. So I'm just really grateful for them and proud of the way that I was able to share what I want to share because I really think it will help a lot of people and I just look forward to hopefully hearing those stories and just sort of expanding the knowledge about fasting and people coming up to me saying oh you know what I didn't think fasting was safe for me because I'm a woman for x y and z reasons but I've done it and hey now I'm off my insulin how cool is that I want to second that kudos to Greystone Yeah, we've been lucky. They did the obesity code, diabetes code, the associated cookbooks, PCOS plan, and um, now the essential guide to women in fasting. So we're really, really just so proud to work with them. They're a great Canadian business. And they actually um, have a U.S. base that's not far from me in Berkeley, California. So that's been cool to interact with them over here. And they have an amazing international relationship because how quickly they get our books out there in other languages and other countries. So it's really great. I'm super excited, Megan. I can't wait to get a hold of your new book. As you were talking, Megan, about the things that you're most proud of, I was thinking, dang, Nadia mentioned earlier how much of an overachiever Megan has been. And I was thinking, let's see, when I was diagnosed with type 2, Megan if I got my math right, was probably about 15. (laughs) If only she had written this book then, (laughs) and I could have healed myself then. (laughs) She probably could have if she had the information. At 15, she was already sitting in the same clinic that I met her and started working with her seven years ago. 15 years old, she was already working in that clinic. Well, the only problem was we were prescribing insulin and the Canadian food <laughs> food guideline. Then. Like you said, that's what you knew at the time. Yeah. And, and now you know different. So even though I didn't have this book in my hands when I was first diagnosed with type 2, I am so grateful that I'm going to have this book now as I'm in that menopausal time zone because I know that there are still things that I want to work on in improving my metabolic health. And I'm so grateful for you sharing all of your wisdom and putting it in one place because I can follow you all over. I get to meet with you once in a while, so I get to pick your brain as well. But to have it all in a book is is just overwhelmingly exciting for me. So very much looking forward to this. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's support. I know our team will all have a copy of the book in a matter of days. And we really look forward to you know bringing it to our community and our global communities with fasting as well. So we've got some upcoming things planned. We do a monthly book club in our Fasting Method community. It's hosted by one of our colleagues, Lisa Chance. I'm going to be collaborating with Lisa, doing a special book club on it this summer. So stay tuned for that if you're part of our TFM community. We'll be collaborating so people can read along with it. We're going to have a discount code for for those that are participating to get access to the book. And then they'll have their chance every week to break it down with me. And in the middle of June, I'm actually going to be doing a live meetup in the San Francisco Bay Area, both with our book and about the fasting method. So it'll give me a chance to meet local people, which I'm really excited about because we haven't done anything because of COVID over the years, uh, the last few years. And then I had to miss Low Carb Denver this year due to extenuating circumstances. So I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone. I know there's so many fasters in the Bay area because uh, they run into me at the farmer's market and everywhere and uh, always so grateful when they stop and say hi and share their fasting story. So it'll be a great opportunity for everyone to come together, ask me their questions on the book and share their fasting stories. So we'll stay tuned with dates and information about these upcoming events this summer. So that's very exciting, Megan. I am encouraging everyone listening, go ahead Hop on to the website, get the resources set up so that you can pre-order your book so that you don't have to wait any longer. Don't let Nadia and I have it too long before you get it. You're going to want to get this book. So go ahead and pre-order it and get yourself set up for success. Yeah, and you'll be able to find the rest of our books too up on our website, including Nadia's book. And we actually, we joked with Greystone the other day, if you combine both books, it's really the total 
total guide to women in fasting. Um, when we talk about the inflammation and metabolic syndrome and Nadia's PCOS. So all of the links you can find over at thefastingmethod.com. Well, thank you both for having this conversation with me about this upcoming book. Super excited. I'm excited for everybody listening today too to let me know what they think. But we appreciate you joining us today for another episode and we'll be back next week. Happy fasting, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take good care. Bye.